with the freezer, number one, that we're working with. I am not gonna take inventory now. I have a rough estimate of what's in here because I have inventoried them in the past. I'll just open it enough to show you. It's so packed that I just don't want to take everything out and put everything back in. I just want you to see how full they are. I have everything from leftovers to all of my clearance that I've just been buying all throughout the year. I have so much stuff in here that you can see how full it is, what we have to work with. So sometimes we're gonna be eating leftovers whenever I don't feel like cooking or whenever it's a, you know, a busy day, we're gonna be eating some of this stuff. I also have this freezer. This is freezer number two that we have to work with. I'll just give you a brief overview. It's very humbling to show you how messy this is and my goal is to organize it as we move on into the challenge but for now uh, we are just gonna pull from the front and the top and then as we start cooking more meals then we'll inventory and I'll show you where we're at this is some of that eggnog that I have picked up for 50 cents a lot of this is just stuff that I've picked up on clearance here and there, and it really needs to be gone through and eaten. So here we are. Here's a quick look at what we have to work with in the fridge. It's a mess. <laughs> so we have some cinnamon bread, some ham, sour cream, coconut water, mushrooms, raw cheese that we got at the Amish store between the holidays, some hummus, cream cheese, some drinks, some milk, some almond milk, some half and half, some chicken stock, mushrooms, cheese, bagels, Peppers. Leftover cheese. Mozzarella. Feta. Lemons and limes. All right. And condiments. Pretty much what we're working with. The freezer in the house is the utmost importance to me. As you can tell, it did not shut well the other day. So there's a lot of frost and there's just a lot of things that um, I wanna get through in here. Now there's also a lot of stuff in here that have been opened already and just need to be finished up. That's part of the reason why I wanna tackle this first. The other reason is because like I said, there's a lot of frost buildup because it wasn't closed well the other day. Probably because it's too full and something was in the way. So this is what we're working with, guys. Today, I'm going to make a chicken stew. I'm going to use these chicken thighs that I had gotten for 50% off and chicken legs. I put just a touch of water in this seven quart Dutch oven with a little bit of homemade roux that I had in the refrigerator that I wanted to use up. And I put it in here so it could start dissolving. This is not nearly enough to make the stew. So I am gonna run to the pool house and grab a jar of pre-made roux I used over the holidays and I have some left in there. So I'm gonna go run and get that and then I will be back. This is the roux that I had picked up on one of my last grocery hauls for $4.27 from Kroger. It's a brand that I had never tried before and I told you that I would let you know what I thought after I tried it. Well, I can authentically say it is Cajun approved. And I like to dissolve the roux really well. The amount of roux that you use is gonna be dependent upon what you're making. If you want to make a gumbo, you use less roux. If you want to make an authentic Cajun stew, you're going to use more roux and less liquid. So you want the roux to dissolve, but you want to be careful that it does not stick. But as you can see, it is really thick. It needs more liquid, even though the roux has not all the way dissolved. Turn the fire a little bit lower and add a little bit more water. Oops. And that happens. 
now we're going to try to dissolve the rest of this roux. There's still some left in here, so I'm going to put this back in the fridge and we'll have enough for something else later on. Now that all the roux has dissolved, you can see how thick it is and decide if you want to add more roux or how much liquid you're going to want to add. There's a couple of little pieces that's not all the way dissolved and you can squish those against the side of the pot. I do like to make sure that everything is dissolved before I add anything else if I'm using store-bought roux. So we're gonna go ahead and let this simmer on low a little bit longer. For the stew that I wanna make, this is probably enough roux. That's gonna be perfect. Now I'm gonna add a quart of chicken stock. That's it for the liquid. Now all you're gonna do is you're gonna add an onion, carrots, some potatoes. These are baby gold potatoes and I'm leaving the skins on. Now I'm gonna add the chicken. These are the chicken legs. They're still frozen. I just season them on both sides. All right, so I just added the chicken thighs. I seasoned them. They're still frozen as well. And this will give you an idea of the consistency of the stew. Thicker than a gumbo and it has potatoes and carrots. But other than that, it's very similar. I think I showed a pork stew on a previous video. It's the same concept. You can also use beef or venison. I currently have it on medium, uncovered. Let it cook until the chicken's done. Probably about 40 minutes. It's ready. I'm gonna plate it up and we're gonna serve over rice. I want you to see the consistency of the gravy. Couple of carrots, potato. I'm gonna do a chicken thigh. Let's give it a taste. This is yummy. I have not had this in a long, long time. In fact, the last time I made a stew, I think it was the pork stew that we made together. So it's been a really long time since I've made a chicken stew. I hope you give this a try and let me know in the comments below if you enjoy. Here's a look at the sliders that I just pulled out of the oven. These are for breakfast and these are for lunch. I think I've made these on a separate video in the past. I'll link it below. These are very similar, just no egg and different hams and cheeses. This is my go-to breakfast slider. This is my go-to lunch slider. I had this bread in the freezer and I'm trying to use up everything that I have in the freezer before I start making homemade fresh bread. So just wanted to give you guys a look. This is going to be breakfast and lunch for the next couple days. Tonight we are going to bake a duck. This is a duck that we grew here this year. We processed it ourselves, pulled it out of the freezer a couple days ago. It's been in the refrigerator and we're gonna bake it. I am trying out this new mount. Uh-oh, let's hope the phone doesn't fall. The one featured on Shark Tank mounts on any surface. Let's see if we can get this to work. Grab another glove. All right, so it fell once. So this is a Morganza duck. This is our favorite to grow. It's very fatty and it stays very moist. I'm using Tony's Sassery. All right, so here's the duck that's been seasoned on the inside and out. We are gonna bake it covered in a Dutch oven, breast side up. I'm not using any oil in the bottom of this pot because there's a lot of fat on this duck. Reserve this for the gravy, but we're gonna go ahead and bake it for an hour in the oven covered on 350 before we make a gravy. 350 and we'll set a timer for an hour. It's been an hour. Okay, so we had not put any liquid or anything in the bottom of the pot. We're gonna take the duck out and we're gonna put it back in the bowl that it was originally defrosting in. I did rinse it out and I took what was in that bowl and I put it in this little bowl. Now in here, we're gonna do two things. We are gonna remove some of this fat so that we can use it for something else. It's wonderful duck fat. I love to cook potatoes and duck fat. 
Now, whatever we use this for, it'll have to be savory because this was seasoned with Cajun seasoning. All right, that's good. Okay, so we ended up taking out about three quarts of the fat. Now we're gonna make a gravy on top of the stove. Turn the heat to medium high. We are gonna add a large onion. We're gonna let this brown a little bit. So it's been a few minutes. The onions are translucent. There's a little bit of color at the bottom of the pot. I think that my burner is hotter on that side. So we're gonna turn it like this. Now we're gonna add this good stuff, which is gonna help make a fantastic gravy. This is where an authentic Cajun gravy gets its color. You can cut this up or you can leave it whole. I just turn the heat lower and I wanted to show you how dark and caramelized the onions and the gravy is and also how translucent the oil is. Now, if you do not like oil in your food or your cooking, you could use a paper towel and blot out that oil at this point. We know this is a very healthy oil. This is an animal that we grew here. So we are gonna consume it. It's good for your brain. It's good for your body and your cells. We like the oil, we're gonna keep it. Sometimes I will cut the duck at this point and finish the gravy on the stove. However, we have time. I'm busy doing other things and I don't mind if this sits in the oven. I love to cook things in the oven in the winter time because it warms up the house. So we're gonna put this back in the oven. I'm gonna add a half a quart of water. I'm gonna take this duck and put it back in the pot. Now, if you're gonna serve this within the next 30 minutes or so, another option would be to put it back in the oven without the lid and the top will get nice and brown and crispy. If it's gonna be in the oven for more than 20 or 30 minutes, I would suggest putting the lid back on. It will baste itself with the lid and it'll stay really juicy. We don't wanna lose any of this liquid. We're gonna take this, pour this on the top. Now we're gonna take the lid, put it back on and put it back in the oven for probably about another 45 minutes. It's been 45 minutes. Now we're gonna go ahead and take the lid off and put it back in the oven. We're gonna turn the temp up from 350 to 425 for the last 10 minutes, just to brown the top. The timer just went off. So we're gonna go ahead and let this rest for about five minutes out of the oven. And I just made some corn from the Gordon. The duck has been cut, put back in the gravy. There's the carcass, there's the extra fat. Oh, let's serve. This leg looks pretty yummy. It's the gravy. And here it is. Tonight for dinner, we're basically gonna have fast food at home. We're keeping it super simple. We are gonna do this Texas style two alarm chili kit and I'm gonna follow the directions on the back. We have tomato paste and onion, two pounds of ground beef, still frozen. I'm gonna go ahead and start cooking it frozen. And I have some leftover corn chips from the holidays. Very simple and easy. And here it is, chili and fresh stone ground homemade cornbread. Tonight for dinner, we're gonna have chicken stir fry. We're gonna use these chicken thighs and some Kinder's teriyaki sauce and whatever vegetables we grab up out the freezer. And this is dinner for tonight, chicken teriyaki stir fry. We have broccoli, chicken, green beans, carrots, onions, and my son blessed me and cooked. Didn't even have to cook tonight. And this is fantastic. Today we are having some salmon with some leftover rice and some pickled beets. All around goodness. Fuel your brain, fill your belly. Easy, delicious, fast food. 
We have between three and four pounds of ground beef, probably closer to four. This is not the traditional meatloaf. This is gonna have a cream of mushroom topping. You're gonna need ground meat and onion. We are gonna use water as the binding agent. I know that sounds odd, but that's what I like to use. And especially in a pinch when we're doing this challenge, water works just fine and it's free. You're gonna use mustard, Worcestershire sauce, salt, pepper, cayenne pepper because we like spice, plus paprika. If you don't like spice, just use the paprika, garlic powder, and onion powder. Um, if you don't wanna use big chunks of onion, I'm gonna use onion and garlic powder. And the topping's gonna be this cream of mushroom soup. And we're gonna thicken it up with this cornstarch. And we're gonna put that on the top with a little bit more of this Worcestershire sauce to add a little bit of color. So the seasoning has been incorporated and mixed really well. And now we're gonna add the onion. I know this looks like a lot of onion, but it's really good in the meatloaf. So while we finish mixing this up, we can go ahead and get our oven preheating to 350. It's not quite there yet, but it will be by the time we're ready to have this put in the oven. All right, so here you have it. The meatloaf's ready to go in the oven, and we're gonna go ahead and set a timer for about 45 minutes. We ended up only using about a fourth of a cup of water. I'm gonna go ahead and put all of this away wash this bowl and go ahead and make the topping next we have a pot full of baby potatoes these are organic gold potatoes because they're organic it's my preference to leave the skin on so this is what it looks like after 45 minutes in the oven i did about one and a half cups of this portobello mushroom soup and then i did a little bit of water and cornstarch and some more Worcestershire sauce ahead and pour it on top coated the top and then I took a little bit of extra and I put it along the sides we're gonna go ahead and put this back in the oven for another 15 20 minutes potatoes are soft so I drained out the water I had taken the butter out of the freezer and I had put it on the side and I think it accidentally touched the stove so as I open this the butter is melted I was planning on only putting half of this butter it's a mess so I'll just do it this way I have a couple of teaspoons of salt in here so I'm gonna go ahead and put that you do want to salt your potatoes very well a little bit of milk a little bit of half and half and a little bit of this cream cheese some black pepper. Now we're gonna use a potato masher. We're just gonna mash all the potatoes. For us, this is how we like them, creamy and chunky. We have the mashed potatoes, and now I'm gonna top it with the meatloaf. If you want this gravy thicker, you can also use cornstarch to thicken up the gravy on the side. Let's taste it. This is definitely one of our family favorites. Wow, my husband likes less gravy or less sauce than me. That soup made a really thick, nice coating on the top and it adds so much flavor. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.